When Toyota canceled the Yaris about a month ago, here for the States anyways, I felt like it was only a matter of time before Honda did the exact same with the beloved Fit. And today is that day where Honda has announced the cancellation of the Fit. And sadly, we have a lot more news to discuss about more Honda cancellations in this video, but we'll also talk about some exciting stuff as well. It's not all doom and gloom. <laughs> Welcome back, Luxurious Fleet. My name's Kirk. If you're new to the channel, I talk about Japanese autos. This channel is dedicated to that. So if you're into that, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and let's get into the cancellations from Honda. Overall, Motor Trend, Honda stops Civic SI, drops Civic Coupe, and shuts down Fit for 2021. Oh, there's the beloved Civic Coupe right there. It's been going strong for so long. So we know there's an all new 2020 Civic on the way. And that's why that they're putting a hold on the Civic Si for this last year of this this current generation Civic because they're going to be debuting a new one for 2022. At least they should, maybe one for 2023. They're not going to kill the Si Civic. That would be complete folly on their part. But they're going to waylay it into the next generation. What about the Civic Type R? Well, we know that's going to carry over for 2021 with a few additions for that special limited edition, which I think is all sold out at this point. And just a little bit, we'll talk about the next generation Type R and the excitement around that rumored vehicle. The official word today is that the Civic Coupe will conclude production at the end of the 2020 model year. And since 2016, coupe sales have fallen from 16% to just 6% of the total sales of all Civics, where the hatchback is up to 24%. So sadly, here it is, the Honda Fit is dead in America. 2020 will be the final model year for the car known as the Jazz in other parts of the world. Honda says the Civic hatchback and the HRV are already taking enough sales away from the Fit that together the two vehicles can simply take its place. It's sad to see that the Yaris and now the Fit are gone. These small Japanese vehicles are no longer offered here in the States. And that makes the price of entry into your beloved Japanese brands a little bit higher. Uh, before it was about 16, 17 grand. Now you're gonna have to jump to a Corolla if you're a Toyota person or a Civic if you're a Honda person. That's more money for a lot of entry level buyers. But sales don't lie. If that vehicle wasn't selling at 16 grand, but the Civic was selling in droves in low 20s, then they know what they're doing. And sadly, the Fit has met its end in America. It lives on as the Jazz, as we know. Uh, many parts of the world is going to continue to be super strong as a hybrid in Europe and Asia. So while it's sad to see it gone here, it had a good life here in the States and it's ready to focus on markets where it's more appreciated. As a result, Honda is going to increase production of the HRV to capitalize on the growing sales. And there's another discontinuation, the Clarity Electric, but we've known about that for a while now. I don't think anyone's going to be upset about the Clarity Electric disappearing from America. And there's one final discontinuation. The Accord will no longer be getting a manual. So us manual fans out there, I mean, sales numbers don't lie. They're canceling the Civic hatchback or the Civic Coupe, I should say. That had a manual, The well, manual option, I should say. The Fit had a manual option, that's gone. And now the Accord manual is gone as well. Hey guys, smash the like button. That helps me out tremendously on the YouTube algorithm. And maybe, maybe if we get just enough likes, Honda will continue to offer a manual in some shape or form in their lineup because they make fabulous manual transmissions, although no one buys them. Heading over to Motor Trend. Wait, we were just at Motor Trend. We're still at Motor Trend. Honda Civic Type R may go hybrid, get all wheel drive and throw down 400 horsepower. Uh, they're taking this technology from the NSX, but really, and I'm not going to read too much into this article, I'll just tell you what it is. If you remember the RLX, the Acura RLX Sport Hybrid that was just discontinued, the RLX was canceled here in America. It lives on as the Honda Legend, of course, in Japan, but there's a hybrid power plant for that where they have the V6 up front that powers the front wheels and they have electric motors in the back that power the rear wheels. In the NSX, it's flipped. They have the mid-engine V6 in the back powering the rear wheels and they have electric mowers, uh, mowers, mo motors powering the front wheels. It's going to be more similar to that RLX slash legend power plant where they're going to have that two liter turbo uh, four cylinder that they currently have in the type r and throw in some additional electric motors in the very back to give it up to 400 horsepower if they're able to do that and not increase the price a whole lot 
we know that vehicle would be an absolute hoot to drive, but who knows what that would drive the prices to. And I can't even imagine when you push a car that hard with that technology, what's the longevity like, you know? The Acura NSX, you think they would, with that technology, have got enough experience and track miles to know that they can put it into a more consumer-friendly package in the Type R, if you can call that consumer-friendly. But the cool thing is even though it's a hybrid, in theory, it still could hold on to the six-speed manual while the computers hold on to the speed of the motors in the rear and the six-speed manual can, uh, handles the speed of everything up front. So really exciting. That would be a lot of fun to see. But would you rather just have a fully electric one at that point? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think it would be cool to have a Frankenstein like that and, and try it out on the track for sure. And lastly, Green Car reports, Honda and CATL enter long-term partnership, including joint, de <laughs> joint development of batteries. I'm so used to seeing joint venture. CATL is one of the top three largest battery makers in the world. Uh, we have Panasonic, we have CATL, and we have BYD, the last two being Chinese companies. Um, Toyota's working with all of them. Panasonic and CATL are working with Tesla. And then Honda is now uh, officially uh, in cahoots with CATL, which from what I'm hearing, CATL could have the most promising uh, battery technology at this point in time. At least that's from just rumors and speculation, but let's go into it. The first Honda model with CATL batteries is scheduled to launch in the Chinese market in 2022. So of course they're going to have the joint venture and explore battery recycling reuse and joint R&D into fundamental technologies. And here's a great looking Honda EV concept, the Everest, that would do well. It looks like an HRV to me, let's be honest. It's probably an HRV that's been electrified. And a vehicle like that would do really, really well in many markets around the world. Um, I think it would compete very well with like the HR, <laughs> the CHR <laughs> fully electric that you see in China. And then you're also gonna see that in parts of Europe as well. And then here in the States, we have the Kona electric, the Hyundai Kona electric, which would compete directly with uh, an Everest EV. Who knows when we would see it come to market though. They mentioned Toyota like I just did and they said they've been developing uh, solid state batteries together. And then CATL recently made clear that it's offering a 16 year million mile battery to all automakers, not just Tesla. That is great news. We don't, like while it would be great for Tesla to have the most advanced battery technology, it's hard to argue that they don't already have that. Uh, but since they're working with C CATL, I really do think that that's gonna even the playing field. Once again, just like the playing field right now with internal combustion engines is fairly even, no one really has a massive power advantage over others unless you're talking about Lexus and we're not going, not going there guys because Lexus will eventually get into electrified probably a lot sooner than a lot of the other luxury brands. But this is about Honda today. So the battery maker has considered a United States plant and Honda has also partnered with GM and will result in at least two Honda fully electric vehicles for the US market built by General Motors. How do you guys feel about that one right there? You know, I, I, I'm never a big fan of Japanese automakers rebadging their cars as something else. We've seen it, I mean, gosh, we've seen it with like what the, the Geo Metro before and the Suzuki's and things like that. And I'm sure Honda's done it before, but I, it just doesn't make me feel good. I want my Honda to be a Honda and I want my Toyota to be not a BMW or a Subaru. You guys get the picture, but that's the world we're living in. All these automakers are really struggling for profitability. They have to pool the resources together and then working with GM. I'm sure not a lot of you guys are excited about that, but I made a video a long time ago how in the next 10 years, I think we're gonna have just a few umbrella companies in the auto industry. Volkswagen is gonna be a big one. They already are. You're gonna have Toyota and they own much of the other Japanese automakers, and you have Honda and GM. Uh, I'm sure Ford is working with someone in there, probably like Volkswagen, who knows? And Dodge and Nissan, who knows <laughs> what their alliances that aren't so strong right now. It's scary to think what they're going towards. But Honda does not sell any battery electric cars in the United States. And no, we don't get the Honda E here. The Honda E would probably only have about 120 to 150 miles uh, in the EPA circuit. And that is a beautiful looking, tiny electric city car for Europe and parts of Asia. And it's very charming. I love the design of it. We're just not gonna get anything like that here. 
Instead, that uh, Everest EV concept that is based off the HRV, or at least it looks like it is in my opinion, I could see that doing pretty well here as maybe the first EV. But that was a lot of news today, guys. The Fit is gone. Uh, the Honda Civic Coupe is gone. Manuals are disappearing from the market left and right. Uh, exciting news for the Type R with the next generation. And then it's good to see Honda, even though they're behind, <laughs> them at least grabbing a hold of a EV rope and securing their own battery supply. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the comments like always. And yeah, and the next video too. Take care of yourselves. Peace out.